Hey guys, Ivan here and in this video we're gonna talk about the New York Pro and the most likely top two at that show. So up until this Pittsburgh Pro guest posing a lot, actually pretty much everybody had Nick Walker winning that New York Pro quite easily. But after Nick's Pittsburgh Pro guest posing appearance, I think people are a little bit shifted. And no, I'm not necessarily saying that Martin Fitzfotter is going to be the biggest challenge to Nick Walker. It could be Tony Burton or Quinton Araya or somebody else like Beef Stew that might challenge Nick even more. But we just saw Martin compared to Nick Walker. Personally, I feel like Nick Walker's biggest challenge is going to be Martin Fitzwater. So in this video, we're gonna do a little comparison to see can Martin challenge Nick Walker or potentially beat him? And what are the flaws of Nick Walker, which Martin and the other guys can expose at the New York Pro? So the biggest flaw that I'm sure everybody pretty much noticed about Nick Walker at this guest posing was his midsection. He usually controls it really well, not only at shows, but at guest posings as well. This time around, it wasn't the case. Why wasn't it the case? Well, maybe because he's at the point where he can't even control it properly anymore, because he definitely did put on a lot more mass. I know how crazy it sounds. Everybody keeps saying that Nick is at a point where he cannot put any more muscle on, but he did it. How? I have no idea. He managed, he managed to get bigger, however, with all that size, midsection got blown out of proportion. And also, I think because of it, his legs are looking probably the smallest that they ever looked in comparison to the rest of his body, like symmetry-wise. So even though he's incredibly muscular, I wonder how much he's weighing here, my guess would be somewhere around 270, which is completely insane for a guy of his height, at this body fat percent, so he is a freak, he is a mass monster like no other today, and because of that, he's still, in my opinion, the favorite to win the New York Pro, but I am not so sure anymore, up until this guy's posing, I was convinced, I was 100%, like 99.99% .99 sure that Nick is gonna win this show easily, but now I don't know anymore, because look at this freaking stomach, it's hanging out a little bit too much, and also because of it, look at the legs here. They are definitely not looking proportionate to his upper body. And because of this midsection, other body parts don't look as impressive as they would if his midsection was a little bit smaller at least. So adding all this muscle, it may have hurt Nick Walker. Not in the side poses though, nor in the back poses. His back poses are actually looking much better now. That lower body from behind, that hamstring that he tore, is looking probably better than ever. And the glutes are really conditioned, I mean, he's really massive in the lower body. Upper body as well, the back is significantly improved. Back double was always good, but look at the back lat spread. Definitely significant improvement. Is this muscularity, is this freak factor going to be enough against some really aesthetic and also pretty big bodybuilders like Martin, like... Tony O'Burton, like Quinton Araya or Beef Stew, I don't know, honestly, I'm not sure what's gonna happen. So like I said, Martin Fitzwater is definitely smaller than Nick Walker, but is he small? Is he like not big enough? I don't know about that, I think he has a lot of muscle as well. Maybe he's not the biggest guy right now, but I don't think he's really lacking many body parts, or like... I don't think he's lacking any thickness, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be really conditioned, really detailed in one week from now. Hopefully the lighting is going to be better than here. This lighting was probably one of the worst lightings I ever saw on a bodybuilding stage, so nobody can look conditioned here. I mean, just compare this lighting to, for example, Detroit Pro Lighting. Actually, don't do that, it's not even comparable. So Martin, again, very complete as well, like he has the back, he has the glute striations, he has great hamstrings. I mean, he's not as wide and as big as Nick, for sure, but his midsection is tight. You know, this guy actually looks pretty aesthetic for a guy of this size. So, is there an actual chance of Martin defeating Nick Walker at the New York Pro? Conditioning-wise, maybe Martin is gonna have a little bit more details because he's smaller. I think his back is, like, more, more ripped, more detailed. Some other body parts as well, but... I think conditioning overall, like body fat percent, is going to be comparable, very much the same. 
Obviously, size is the big difference. As you can see, Nick is just bigger, wider, more round, more massive. Even though it's not that noticeable when these guys are doing individual posing routines, it's quite visible when they stand one next to another. Side chest is a really strong shot for Nick. Not only that he is super massive, but he has a lot of details as well in the side shots, and he can hide his midsection. To a point, if you pay attention, if the judges pay close attention, they will notice that the difference is quite noticeable, but this is bodybuilding, this is not classic. In classic, you need to show your wheat taper and small waist in the side chest. In bodybuilding, I think it's way more about showing the muscularity of the physique and the details, so I think Nick's got Martin in this one. Now, we come to the back poses. Lower body, Nick is definitely killing pretty much everybody. Really, he's killing uh, Derek Lansford, Samson Dauda, Hari Japan. Nobody has got these kind of hamstrings or these kind of glutes and this kind of thickness in the lower body from behind. Nobody has this. These hamstrings are arguably the best hamstrings of all time. I mean, him, I would say, feel heat as well. I think those two are the biggest hamstrings of all time. Now, as far as upper body, as far as the back itself, I mean, Nick is really wide, and his arms in this shot are looking ridiculous. The biceps, how much they're popping, it's insane. Waist to shoulder ratio also looks very good for Nick in this one. There is no trouble with waist size here. And as far as like the details and the depth of the back, maybe Martin's got him in that area. The details in the upper back, the lower traps, the rhomboids, that area, but... You know, as far as the width of the lats and just the width of the entire physique and again the arms, the shoulders as well, the, the hamstrings, the legs from behind yeah, Nick definitely destroys him in this pose and he probably destroys him in this one even more because his back lats but is much improved and Martin, he's not very wide in the back uh, lat spread his back double is amazing back lat spread, I mean it's good, it's very good but standing next to Nick or somebody of that stature, that level you can definitely see the difference in width, the difference in lat thickness, lat size, not to mention lower bodies, so Nick is destroying him in both back poses. Even though Martin is very good in the back poses, you know, Nick is just too much for him. And now we come to the interesting part, all those shots before Nick won, but as far as the front double bicep, even though his arms are ridiculous, insane, I feel like front double bicep is definitely more than just about the biceps. It's more so about the wheat taper, and Nick's wheat taper is just horrible. And as far as the X frame, there is none. Nick is looking flat, head to toe. His legs are not popping out, his waist is wide, his shoulders are basically as wide as his waist. And his legs, his outer sweeps are barely wider than his waist. So this is not looking very good for Nick. I definitely have Martin in this pose. Even though you can say that uh, Nick has more muscle, more density in the legs, or bigger arms, or I don't know, thicker chest, bigger lats, whatever. Not by much, really, but you could say that. However, the midsection, the waist size, look at the freaking difference. It's huge difference. And you might say, well, it's only one pose, Nick wins all the other, but it's not like that. It's one pose, but here you can see the very important thing that they're looking for today in bodybuilding, and that's a good wheat taper or X frame. They're looking for that, it's very, very clear. Hadi had it this year at the Arnold Classic, uh, Derek had it big time at the Mr. Olympia, Samson has it. They are choosing those guys. They had Andrew Jack, the head of Hunter Labrada at the Mr. Olympia. Even though, in my opinion, Hunter was in much better conditioning, Andrew's wheat taper was better. And I think that's a big factor these days. Of course, there are many factors. How much can this one factor affect Nick Walker? That is the question. How much is his bubble gut going to be visible in the transitions? That's also the question. It was a big issue for Nick at his guest posing. Hopefully, he was just too relaxed here. And he's gonna fix it for the show, but I don't know if he will. Yeah, again, he is most likely winning all the poses from the side and from the back, and let's say most muscular, which is from the front. But you guys remember 2018 when Phil Heath lost? He was better than Sean Rodden in every pose, basically, but in the transitions is where he lost because his midsection wasn't good enough. So, could the same thing happen to Nick Walker that happened to Phil Heath back in 2018? Can Nick Walker win this show based on his freak factor or is his lack of flow 
going to hurt him that much that he loses the New York Pro. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, please stay tuned and subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much guys for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.